Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. We're here today on episode 1692 of the Cabral Concept. I'm glad you could join me here today for our discussion on allulose, which is the new, or at least new to mainstream media for sure, uh, wonder sweetener, we will call it. And that is because it is being heralded as the next greatest sugar out there or sweetener out there without all the calories. So we'll be getting into all of that today. We'll certainly be talking about the benefits potentially of allulose. We'll be talking about where it comes from and also, is it safe? Then I'll give you my take at the end, whether I'll use it in my own diet or not. And um, again, looking forward to bringing all of these uh, studies and all of this research to you. This is our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday's show. I think that this topic is perfect for today's show because if you are looking to transform your body or maintain great health, maintain a great body, what I want to share with you is this, is that it always starts with getting your body healthy, right? So if you want to lose weight, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 100 pounds, 200 pounds, none of that really matters until you get your body healthy. And the reason is that you will struggle eventually. You'll plateau and you will struggle to take the weight off. You'll have to do hours of exercise, extreme dieting, remove all the carbohydrates in your diet unless you get your body healthy. When you get your body healthy, then you don't need to compensate with so many other, I'll say, one-sided approaches. That's really it, meaning like eliminate all of this macro group or over-exercise or whatever it might be. The goal is to get your body healthy so that you can maintain a healthy life where losing weight does not become a struggle and keeping it off is not a struggle either. So that's always what we try to bring you on our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesdays where the wellness comes before the weight loss because it's going to be so much easier to lose the weight. You'll lose the weight in the process and you'll be healthier in the end, which is really what it should all be about. So a lot of people talking about allulose because it's showing up in more of their uh, well, you know, the truth is this, and I'm going to get to this towards the end. It's showing up in more of their processed foods and healthy processed foods and keto processed foods and primal processed foods and all of those things. And again, I'm not saying that these things are bad, but we need to begin to really recognize what we're looking at. So let's, I'm going to get to that at the end. It's something I, I feel very strongly about, and I want to share that with you. But first things first is what is allulose? Now, the first time I heard about allulose was not until probably like 2016. I know that seems like a long time ago now, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that long ago. And also, it's just starting to show up in a lot of, um, well, nutritional supplements and cereals and granola bars and any place where you could basically replace sugar. Because allulose is a monosaccharide. It's a simple sugar. It's one, basically, sugar molecule, monosaccharide, right? So what are we looking at? Well, it's not dissimilar to glucose or fructose in that manner, and actually very similar, believe it or not, to fructose. So when I was doing the research on allulose, because I really, I always want to give you the pros and cons and the ins and outs and really study it um, for myself, my, my practice, and for you. So... What I found is that it actually has the same molecular structure or molecules, uh, and molecular structure, chemical-based structure is a better way to say it, as fructose, believe it or not. However, the actual structure is arranged differently, which means it doesn't have the same effects on the body in actually a good way as fructose. So that was really interesting to look at it. The other big takeaway was this, that unlike a, a sucrose, which is, when we think about um, sucrose specifically, we think about glucose uh, attached to fructose. So that's called a disaccharide. So that's, that's more than one type of sugar. We've got them bound together. Well, this being a monosaccharide also, also looks pretty good in terms of not causing as many gut issues. That's, that's interesting as well. I'll get to that uh, towards the end as well in terms of the safety and side effects. Uh, one more thing I'd love to be able to share with you is this, and this is one of the reasons why people have been promoting it over the last year to two years. I've certainly gotten more questions on the weekend Cabral house calls about allulose, is that it only contains about 10% of the calories of normal sugar. So if we look at uh, four grams um, or so of a, of a carb of calories, right? So every gram of a carb equals about four calories. Well, with allulose, you're only looking at 0.4. So it's a 90% reduction in terms of calories. Now, again, before we get overboard here, I have to say is hopefully, hopefully you're listening to this podcast, you're listening to other ones, you're reading books, you know that you don't want to be consuming a lot of sugar in the first place, right? That's that's not a goal of ours for sure. Um 
eating fruit, eating natural starches, those types of things, not bad. You have to know the amount for your body for sure. Uh, but I know that you can figure that out by, by again, going through uh, the equilibrium detox, by going through the fat velocity program, by reintroducing slowly, by balancing your hormones, regulating healthy levels of blood sugar, like all of those things. Again, you can do this, no doubt about it. So back to allulose. There are some potential benefits. And I, again, I want to be fair. I really want to go through this because there are a lot of potential benefits when we look at this over a regular table sugar. Okay. So I want to go through those um, specifically for you today. And I also want to say that when you hear about something like allulose, it sounds like it's, you know, made in a lab essentially, but Really, what you want to think about is the os on the end of something is essentially the sugar, right? So fructose, um, allulose, what's another one? Glucose, sucrose, all of the oses are the sugars. So it's I want you to be able to learn as we go through this, right? So when you have an os there, we're looking at the, the carb itself or the sugar itself. And then when we are looking at something, for example, uh, an enzyme would be the ACE at the end of it that helps to break that down, like a cellulase or a xylanase would help break down these specific things like the fructans. So a oh, cellulose would be a plant-based carb uh, for that specific sugar or starch, and then the cellulase would be the thing to break it down. So the OSE simply just denotes the carbohydrate itself, the sugar in there, because carbs break down to sugar, okay? So now let's look at uh, where it comes from in nature. So yes, it has that lab sound to it. And yes, it the most of it, for the most part, allulose is made in a lab and it's an extract from corn. So we have to be careful there. And I'll give that as one of my recommendations at the end of what to watch for. But just know that it is occurring in nature. It's in foods. I know it's in foods such as wheat. I know it's in jackfruit, which is kind of random. I know it's in figs and I know it's in raisins. Uh, it's in maple sugar and it's in brown sugar. I know those for sure. So you'll find it in other places as well, but it's more rare. It's not in a lot of foods, uh, but it is found in those. So now when we look at the potential benefits, one of the reasons why it's been heralded, you know, as this, um, you know, this, this new wonder sugar, wonder sweetener is actually, it has a lot of the same texture as sugar and you can use it in recipes again without all the calories. So that is one of the reasons why people are trending towards it. And there's then the actual health-based benefits that I want to bring you right now. So although one of the side effects people do have is, um, some cramping and bloating and gas, uh, it could be because it's simply not absorbed that well. And that's one of the, again, that, but that's one of the benefits. So it's the, the studies vary wildly. They really do. But it's somewhere between, I believe it was um, like 66 and 80% of allulose is not absorbed uh, through the small intestine. So it essentially passes through the, the gut, like unchanged. So you're not getting a lot of that absorption in the first place. Now, that's a good thing until it's not, right? So if you use a lot of allulose or you're sensitive to it, it could cause cramping, bloating, gas, diarrhea. That's possible. Not a common side effect, but is possible. The other benefit, so the benefit is actually it's not being absorbed. That's part of a benefit, but there's some side effects there. But one other thing that I want to share with you as well is that it doesn't look like it's fermentable, which is kind of nice. So at least right now, again, I reserve the right to change uh, my recommendation in the future based on new research. We have very little human-based studies. There's a study of 14 people, I believe. Again, like 14 people doesn't make a very big study. Certainly not long-term, but they've actually done some pretty good studies on mice and other animals. So again, animal studies uh, do count. They absolutely do count. So I just want to share that with you that the human-based studies is pretty small. So again, in the future, if we find things differently, well, then we can make maybe a new recommendation. But um, small human studies, not uh, fermentable, which uh, does look like a good thing in terms of not being able to create excess yeast, excess uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So that's a plus as well. Looks like it's pretty good in terms of blood sugar regulation, meaning that you're not going to get the highs and low in blood sugar, which means that it's really helping to preserve those beta cells of the pancreas, the same ones that produce insulin, which help to maintain a healthy level of blood sugar, right? Get The insulin gets produced by the beta cells in the pancreas. The insulin then unlocks the cells so that it can draw in glucose, right? That's the ideal. But if we don't have a lot of glucose in the bloodstream in the first place, meaning like not too much, well, then even better because the pancreas doesn't have to work as hard. So that's a good thing. Okay. So we have that. 
And the next one is about fatty liver. So one of the issues with high levels of fructose in the diet, again, high levels of fructose typically comes from a lot of processed food. Um, you're not going to get a lot of fat storage in the liver as well. So that's, again, another big benefit of using allulose over a lot of other types of sugars as well. Uh, the next one, I went over fermentation in the gut, absorption. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of move on past that one as well. And then I wanted to share one more study that I did find, although not major, that there was actually some benefits versus other types of sugars, such as uh, erythritol. And you know that I'm not a fan of, I'm just not a fan of sugar alcohols. I'm not a fan of it. You won't find sugar alcohols in any of the products that I formulate. Um, I just work with too many people with digestive issues, and sugar alcohols can cause a real host of bloating, gas, digestive disorders. It can feed all sorts of uh, gut bugs that shouldn't be there. So I'm just not an advocate, not an advocate of sugar alcohols. I'm not, you know, talking negatively about any products out there. I just don't like them. I really don't. I've just seen them cause too much digestive distress. Yes, some people can have them with no problem at all. I understand that. But I work with a lot of sensitive people in my practice, and I, I just... I have no, like, it's like, what's the point? Why do I need to give someone sugar alcohol? I certainly don't, right? There's no benefit to taking sugar alcohol. It's just replacing another type of carbohydrate. So I just choose not to have it in the first place. But allulose did better anyways than erythritol and other sugar alcohols. Uh, it did better than other forms of sugar in the diet with helping with fat loss. And there actually might be a benefit to in and of itself, of using allulose for a little bit of fat loss. Now, again, is this a massive fat burner? No, you're not going to take it and lose 10 pounds in a month. That's not how it works. Uh, but at least there doesn't seem to be a detrimental effect from using allulose and actually gaining weight. So that's a that's a positive as well, especially when you're looking for a little bit of sweet, right? So just be careful because I've seen a lot of allulose products out there and they mix the allulose with an erythritol with another type of sugar alcohol, something like that to make it even a little bit more sweet. So Again, when I'm doing the research, I'm finding a lot of potential benefits, right? So that's good. Good to see. Um, in terms of the actual safety, well, um, according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, it it falls into the grass category, the generally generally recognized as safe, right? So typically, it means it's safe. Now, again, we can't use that as the end-all, be-all because we know there's a lot of chemicals and toxins out there that fall into the same category, but when they're at a higher dosage, they're a toxin, and when they're at a lower dosage, supposedly, then it's no big deal. However, these things can build up over time, we know, and, and they can be a really big deal, right? We call that the rain barrel effect. So, Okay, here's some of the potential issues. There were no major red flags. There were no major red flags except this one, that the majority of allulose does come from corn, okay? So we need to make sure that you're not taking in genetically modified corn with pesticides, with all the other dangers that come along with genetically, genetically modified organisms. So what I want you to do is simply, if you find an allulose-based brand that you like, or it's in one of your favorite nutritional supplements, simply contact the company and say, hey, just a quick question. Does the allulose that you use come from corn? And if so... No big deal. However, does it come from genetically modified corn? And if they say no, then probably not a huge issue. I'll, I'll tell you why in just a moment. Probably not a huge issue. I'll tell you why. So um, the other thing is that there's no massive long-term, no big long-term studies using actual humans. So I'm not ready yet to give it this big stamp of approval because there's just, it, it is, it's an extract, but Technically, it's created. You know, it's pulled out of corn. Uh, it is naturally occurring so that we know the body is able to absorb it because it actually does occur in food. So I like that. So, the, you know, it's, so I'm not against it. I'm really not. But it's not getting my, my okay, stamp of approval because I don't see any real long-term studies yet. And um, I just don't know. I'm not ready there to give it that stamp of approval. And that's because we, we actually took things too fast with sucralose, with Splenda back in the day. Because they're like, oh, zero calories, it's so great, it's the new this, this, and that, and the other thing. And they're like, oh, oh, it actually affects your gut microbiome. It has a chlorine molecule in there. Oh, that's that's not good. So, again, I wasn't, uh, I was more, um, I was I was more enamored by the uh, amazing things that we could do with chemistry uh, way back in the year 2000 uh, than, than I am now. I'm just not. So, I'm always saying safety first, I really am. Um, I want to give this time. We have time. And the truth is this. Here's the reason why. So do I let's let's sum this up. Do I think 
that allulose uh, would be bad for you to use. I, I don't think so. I don't think that it probably is, right? No long-term studies yet, but a lot of, lot of animal-based studies. Probably not. It probably is not harmful to use, okay? Not in large dosages, small dosages, probably not harmful to use, okay? I'm not using it yet. I want to see long, more long-term studies, okay? That's important. But also, I don't have a real need to. And I want to share with you why. So there's two reasons why. The first one is this. I would always much prefer to use a raw honey or a manuka honey, something like that. They're both raw, of course, but a wildflower locally, local for my allergies and all those things. Even though they're better, I still stay on top of these things. Um, I'd rather use uh, even one that has raw honey, bee pollen, and propolis. Love that as well. Mix that with your coffee. Makes it delicious. Good for as a um, mucolant and... Uh, What's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, an expectorant, if you ever have a cough, mucus. I would rather use a little maple syrup. I would rather use a little natural sugar. I would, like, I have a, um, some, like, uh, older forms of raw sugar that come from Japan, like all these different types of things. I don't ever use more than a teaspoon. We're talking about five grams of sugar. Not going to uh, fluctuate blood sugar levels. And then um, I would rather use stevia. So that's where I'm at right now, like really natural, like really food-based or herbal-based with stevia. So, and people like to say stevia, that, that's fine. I just say if you have a vowel and you have a consonant and then you have a vowel, then you, the first one is E softer. So anyway, I'm in the stevia boat, not the stevia, but I'm okay with you if you like to pronounce it stevia. So that's where I'm at. Now, am I against allulose? I'm not, but I would never have a real reason to use it, but I'm not also against, against recommending it. Here's the big reason. I told you I give another reason as to why I really don't have a need for it. If you're asking to use allulose, it means that you are asking, is it okay for me to eat processed food? To that, and to which I would say, not on a daily basis. So if you're looking to say, Hey, can I eat these new cereals with allulose? Can I eat these new, um, I don't even know, uh, granola bars with allulose? Can I eat this new, I don't know, bread pastries with allulose? My answer would be no. Or it would be, yeah, sure, as a flex meal or cheat meal, absolutely, enjoy yourself. Uh, really, like, enjoy yourself. But at that point, sure, you could use allulose or maybe use some natural maple, uh, maple syrup, uh, which naturally has allulose in it too. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, that's how I look at it. If you're asking me if you are, is it okay to use allulose? I don't see a lot of negatives right now. Again, the I think the long-term research still needs to be there. I think there could be some cramping, some bloating, some gas associated with it. So start with a small dose and, and see how it feels for you, feels for your gut. And then I would all say like, well, how often am I eating it? And it must be because I'm having processed food because you're not adding allulose to most whole foods. So if you follow what I, I typically recommend is a predominantly whole food diet, really. I mean, yes, you can take berries and throw them in a smoothie, smoothie and blend them. That's not processed food. It's taking a whole food and just making it liquefied, right? Um, can you take your purple potatoes and make them into mashed potatoes? Yes. But what you're starting with is an actual whole food, right? So what I like to say is the majority of your diet should be whole foods. Yes, you can use nutritional supplements. Yes, you can use some organic whole food bars, something like that in a pinch. There's no doubt about it. Those are actually whole food. So I don't have an issue with that. But if you're asking me, is, it, is allulose okay? Um, I'm going to say uh, probably, but you know what? Not a big deal in small amounts. And also don't use it that often because that means then you're eating a lot of processed food. So hopefully this podcast was helpful. And um, I know we got a lot of questions that came in to the show on the house calls on the weekend. So um, this was your answer. I really do appreciate our community and so many of the uh, podcast topics actually come from longer form answers for the three or four minute answer I give on the weekend. So really appreciate this community. Thank you so much. This is what it's all about is being able to uh, answer you, serve uh, you to the best of my ability. And as I always say, if this podcast was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. <laughs>